Hi, welcome. This is uh, Clemens at Elector. In this video, we will have a look at a round touchscreen for the Raspberry Pi, the Hyperpixel 2R from Pimeroni. The Hyperpixel 2R is a round 2.1 inch IPS capacitive touchscreen with high speed DPI interface. Like its square and rectangular Hyperpixel 4 brothers, the 2R is intended for Raspberry Pi. Actually, the size is optimized for the Raspberry Pi 0 and 02W, but as it has the standard 40 pin head connector, it can be plugged on any Raspberry Pi equipped with such a connector, as long as you are careful about the mechanical side of things. The display's resolution is 480 by 480 pixels, but as it is round, you must of course subtract the corners. It has 18-bit color depth, meaning 262,144 colors, and supports up to 60 frames per second. The viewing area has a 2.1 inch or 53.3 mm diameter and a viewing angle of 175 degrees. Its full diameter is 72 mm with a height of 11 mm. With the Pi Zero attached to it with the standoffs, the total height or depth, whatever you prefer, is 17 mm. As the display consumes almost every pin of the head connector, you cannot add other extension ports. However, the display does provide an alternate I2C port that can be used to connect things to. To use the Hyperpixel 2R on a Raspberry Pi, you must install a driver. Detailed instructions on how to do this are given on the Pimeroni website and in their GitHub corner. The drivers are for Raspberry Pi OS Buster only, but support for Bullseye is being worked on. I plugged the Hyperpixel 2R on a Raspberry Pi 02W and installed the Raspberry Pi Buster OS on it. Make sure to enable SSH as it will make life a lot easier later on. After installing the driver and rebooting, it showed a tiny version of the desktop and I could open a terminal window. The HDMI port no longer works and the Hyperpixel is now the only display. As it is rather tiny, I did most of the work over SSH on my Windows laptop computer. To use the display in your own applications, Pimeroni has provided a Python 3 library for it. You can find it at GitHub. It includes a few examples, but they didn't work well for me. After some searching, I found that upgrading the Pygame library to the latest version, 2.1.0 when I did this, solved the problems I was having. Now all the demos worked fine. Note that they feature touch, so touch the display to change the colors. Once I had the display up and running, it was time to see if I could do something with it. My idea was to use it for my YouTube subscriber counter to replace the 7 segment display by something sexier. The clock demo seemed like a good starting point. All I had to do was add the YouTube API query part to get the subscriber count and then print the number on the screen. First I installed HTTP lib2, which is required for the YouTube subscriber counter snippet. Running the program now revealed that I also needed the libsdl2-ttf. Keep in mind that your application must call pygame.init if you want to work with the text and fonts and that you must load a font. Loading a font is rather long on the Raspberry Pi Zero, so I put that at the beginning of the program. Finally, I had the subscriber count on the Hyperpixel display. Because the display has touch capability, I added a feature allowing you to position the subscriber count anywhere on the screen simply by dragging it. Like the clock, its color depends on where you touch the screen. To make it stand out, uh, it will not use the same color as the clock unless you touch the center to make everything white. My code can be found at Clemens at Elector at GitHub. Uh, see the description below for all the links. A word about rotating the screen. I wanted the screen rotated in such a way that the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero's USB and HDMI connectors point upwards. This corresponds to 180 degrees or inverted. The Pimeroni driver provides the utilities to do this, but they didn't work for me and failed with a gamma error. 
What did work, however, was simply adding the line display lcd rotate equals 2 to the boot slash config.txt file and reboot the system. Note that for some reason the center of the screen buffer may not be exactly the center of the screen. It can be off in the vertical direction by several pixels. You can correct this by adding an offset, but the sign of the offset depends on the rotation of the screen. You can see in my code how I handled that. I gave the Displays Alternate I2C port only a quick try. According to the Pimeroni website it would be I2C port 3, but I found it as port 11. I connected a Mabi MPU6050 accelerometer module to it to see if it would be found. The I2C detect tool showed the device at address 68 hexadecimal, which is indeed the address printed on the module, so it seems to work. I could also read the sensor after installing the MPU6050 Raspberry Pi library. I happen to notice that the diameter of the Hyperpixel 2R display is almost the same as a Pringle scan. It fits exactly inside. Therefore I decided to build my YouTube subscriber counter clock into an empty Pringle scan. I cut the top and bottom of a can and attach the display with Raspberry Pi assembly to the bottom part with the standoffs so that the display came flush with the inside of the ring on the top part. Now the display is protected when the lid is on. Touch still works with the lid on. The current consumption of the complete assembly is about 300 milliamps in normal desktop operating mode. When booting I observed the peaks of over 500 milliamps, so to be safe you would need a 5 watt 5 volt power supply. Summarizing, I think the Hyperpixel 2R is a really nice add-on for a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. It works fine on a Zero 2. The image quality is very good and touch works fine in your own applications. I think it would be a pretty cool addition to a home automation system. Note that touch needs a driver to make it work as a mouse on the desktop. Unfortunately such a driver does not seem to exist yet, but you can use the example uinput-touch.py as a daemon instead. That works pretty well. Officially there's only support for Buster, but I did give it a try on Bullseye anyway. My program worked exactly the same, except that the menu of the desktop got overlaid at the top of the screen. Ok that's it, I hope you found it interesting. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click or tap the bell button. Thank you for watching.